Today we're going to look at a pretty cool combinatorics problem that comes from a pretty famous problem solving book on combinatorics called 102 Combinatorial Problems. So let's see what we have here. Our goal is to determine when it is possible to arrange the numbers 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, all the way up to n, n. In other words, two copies of the numbers 1 through n so that we have the following n conditions. So between the two appearances of the number one, there is a single number. And then between the appearances of the number two, there are exactly two numbers. Between the appearances of the number three, there are three numbers, and so on and so forth. And so that means between the two appearances of the number n, there are n numbers. Okay, so maybe to get an idea of when this might be possible, the when is kind of a hint here that it'll be possible for certain types of values of n. Let's do some examples. So let's notice for n equals one, this is not possible. And well, I think that's pretty clear, but just to check, Notice that if n is equal to 1, the only way to arrange the number, numbers 1, 1 are well, right next to each other. We don't have anything else to work with, but obviously there's not a number between those two appearances of 1. Okay, so let's look at n equals 2. So there are two ways to start this. We could either start it with the number 1, but then, since we need a single number between the two appearances of one, we've got to put something between those two appearances of one. Since n is two, the only thing we can put is two. But now we've got only one number left to write down, and that's the number two. But now, between the two appearances of two, there's only one number, so that doesn't work. So the only other possibility is to start with the number two. So if we start with the number two, let's observe that there must be two numbers between two and itself, but we can only use one and one there. But that means there's nothing between these two appearances of one. So all in all, it seems to be not possible or it is not possible to make an arrangement with n equals two. Let's look at n equals three. So if we look at n equals three, let's maybe start with the number three and notice, well, how many numbers are we gonna need between the appearance of three and itself? Well, we're gonna need three. And I think maybe a nice way to do it would put a one here, a two here, and a one here. Notice that satisfies the condition that between the two appearances of one, we've got a two. And then, well, notice that we've got two numbers here, one and three, that makes it pretty obvious to put a two right here. So that means there are two numbers between the two appearances of two. So it works out in this case. So let's put a check here. It's possible if n is equal to three. Now let's look at n equals four. And I'll just say that it's possible in this case as well. And it's exhibited by the following. So four, one, three, one, two, another four. And then let's see, after that, we'll need a three and then a two. So there's that for the number four. So now in order to come up with a guess as to the answer to this question, you might want to do some more of these examples, but it turns out that these examples exhibit all of the possibilities. So it's not possible if n is of the form 4k plus one or 4k plus two, it is possible if n is of the form 4k plus 3 or 4k. In other words, not possible if n is congruent to 1 or 2 mod 4, possible if n is congruent to 0 or 3 mod 4. Okay, so now let's get that claim on the board and we'll prove it. Okay, so like we surmised on the last board, this is probably the answer, which of course we have to prove. And I've written it as a claim, and that is such an arrangement is possible if and only if n is congruent to 0 or 3 mod 4. Okay, so we've got two things to prove here. It's an if and only if statement. 
And so what we'll do is we'll look at the case when n is zero or three mod four and we'll exhibit such an arrangement. And then we'll also look at the case when n is one or two mod four and show it's impossible. So let's start with that first. So let's suppose that n is congruent to one or two modulo four. And so just as a quick reminder, what does that mean? Well, that means that n is equal to four times k plus one, or n is equal to four times k plus two. Okay, nice. But now what we'll do from here is let's go ahead and suppose towards a contradiction that we do have an arrangement. So I'll write it like this. So let's suppose that a1, a2, a3, all the way up to a2n is such an arrangement. So when I say such an arrangement, I mean it's an arrangement satisfying our rules over here. And then next up, we wanna define two sequences of numbers. And I'm gonna call them i sub k and j sub k. So they're really subsequences of, uh, or really reorderings of the sequences uh, one through n, and they're defined in this way. So they're defined such that we have a sub i sub k is the same thing as k, which is the same thing as a sub j sub k. Okay, nice. So in other words, they're the two appearances of k. So this is the first appearance in the i kth position, and this is the second appearance in the j kth position. And now, well, just so that we don't get ahead of ourselves, let's make the following observation. At i sub one, i sub two, all the way up to i sub n, and then j sub one, j sub two, all the way up to j sub n. So thinking of those as like one set of numbers is a reordering, I'll write it is a permutation of the set one, two, three, up to two n. Because those are just all of these subscripts renamed. They're renamed in a way so that we have this condition which is written right above. So now let's go from there. Let's maybe do this. Let's observe that if we take i sub one, add it up to i sub n, and then we add that to j sub one, add it up to j sub n, well, that's gonna be the same thing as one plus two plus three, all the way up to two n. And that's just by the commutative rule of addition. We're just adding the numbers one to two n in a different order. But there's a fairly well-known closed formula for this, the triangular number. This is the two nth triangular number. This is n times 2n plus 1. Okay, good. And I'm going to set this equal to something. I'm going to set this equal to capital A sub n just to use it later. And now uh, let's also note the following, and that is that if we take i sub k minus j sub k, we're going to get the number k plus 1. Well, and why is that? Well, we can visualize that pretty easily, and that's because i sub k and j sub k have exactly k terms between them. And they have k terms between them because of this rule that they tell us the position of the place that k lives in those two places. But we know by the rule over here that there are k numbers between those. But if there are k numbers or k terms between i sub k and j sub k, then if you take their difference, and this difference should be actually in the other order given this inequality, we get k plus one. Okay, nice. But then from there, we can look at something kind of related to this a sub n, and that is b sub n. And I'm gonna write that as j sub one added up to j sub n minus i sub one added up to i sub n. And observe that because of this rule right above, that's equal to two plus three all the way up to n plus one. 
But again, there's a closed form for a triangular number. If we added the number one onto that, and then we'd have to take away the number one as well. Well, after some fairly simple arithmetic or symbolic manipulation, we get this as n times n plus three over two. Okay, great. Now we're gonna break this down into our two cases. So if n is congruent to one mod four, I wanna notice the following. We have a sub n is in fact odd, and b sub n is in fact even. And that's because n is of the form 4k plus one. If you stick 4k plus one into each of these types of things, you'll see that you get an odd number and then an even number respectively. Okay, but then from there we see that if we take their sum, we get an odd number. If we take an odd plus an even, we get an odd. So we have odd is a n plus b n. But now observe that a n plus b n, well that cancels the sum of the i1 through i n terms and that gives us twice the sum of the j1 through jn terms, which is most definitely even because it's two times some number. That's exactly the definition of an even number. Okay, well now let's look at the other case. So if n is congruent to two mod four, in other words, it's of the form 4k plus two, we see that a sub n is even and b sub n is odd based off the formulas that we have for a sub n and b sub n. But then we get the same sort of contradiction. I won't even rewrite it again. It's just that instead of a n and b n being odd and even, they're even and odd. But when we take their sum, we still get an odd number, but that's equal to an even number by our previous argument. But of course, an odd number cannot be equal to an even number, which means in both of these cases, we reach a contradiction contradicting our ability to have such an arrangement in this case. Okay, so, well, what did we do? We showed that it's not possible if n is one or two mod four. Now, I'll just jump to a board with us exhibiting the possibilities or the proper arrangements in the case that n is zero or three mod four. So we just showed that such an arrangement was impossible if n was congruent to zero mod three, and I think that's a very satisfying argument. What's not so satisfying is building the arrangement in the other cases. So I'm not really gonna go through that. I don't think that's super interesting. I'll just leave them on the board right here if you guys are interested to look at it. And that's a good place to stop.